In the last 100 years, we have witnessed an unprecedented economic development, which has changed dram dramatically the way we live our lives today. And I can tell you that this is actually due to our ability to create materials that enable us to have application that makes our life easy and then enjoyable. Just like the clothes that we are all wearing that makes us look beautiful this morning. And that is why I'm very fascinated about nanoscience and nanotechnology because it gives us the tool to fundamentally change the property of material to create functionality that can be used to solve some of the most challenging problems that our world faces today. For example, uh, the energy transition. People talk about energy crisis, but there's no energy crisis. I think it's about material crisis. Because of the global warming, we are transitioning from fossil fuels to renewable energy sources. The problem with these energy sources is that they are intermittent, so we need energy storage. And our approach to this uh, based on the work I've been doing, is we can, do, we can achieve this in different ways. So we can use the excess energy, you know, the electricity, you know, from the solar panel or from the wind you know, to create hydrogen. Why hydrogen? If you want to know, you, you, you ask me later. And then with this hydrogen, we can drive car. So there are hydrogen fuel cell vehicles available in major cities in the world, especially California. And then we can also use hydro this hydrogen, combine it with the CO2, which is the major problem of the world right now, to create even new materials. And we can even combine this hydrogen with nitrogen, which is available in the air, to make ammonia, which you can use to make fertilizer. Another way is also to just use battery, you know, to just store this excess energy. But for this, we need, you know, high energy uh, density battery. Why are these materials not there? It's because we need material actually to do this. And this is what we call functional materials to do this. And so my work has been focused on this for the, in the last, in the last, my work has been focused on this, to use this kind of materials. And the material I work on is material called metal hydride, because this material actually is what we call multifunctional material that can enable you to achieve a lot of uh, activities. So for example, you see this. And of course, you can say, why should just one class of material be able to do this? And the beauty is that it lies in our ability to fundamentally change this property of this material to achieve the application that we're interested in. And I'm going to give you just a few examples using the work we are doing. One of the challenges of you know, hydrogen is the fact that you know, it is volatile, it's, uh, it's dangerous, so we need to find a way to store it safely. And in the last 20 years, the idea was to use powdered material. And one of these is metal hydride. I don't want to go into de in detail. And this material contains a lot of hydrogen. So when you heat it up, it gives away hydrogen. So you can use that in combination of fuel cell to drive your car. However, you need to go to about 350 or 500 degrees centigrade to get this hydrogen. Now, we've been able to actually, just by nanostructuring this material, we're able to reduce down this temperature so that you see what you see on the, on, on the left is about discharge, and you can get this hydrogen at low temperature. Now, what about charging? If you just leave the material that way, you cannot charge it. However, when you nanostructure it, you can see on the right that you, you can increase the amount of hydrogen that you can charge in your car you know, within a short time. Another example I want to give is battery. Now, this is the same material you know, that we use for this hydrogen storage, and it's just a serendipity discovery. We find out that by manipulating this material, we're able to you know, make the lithium to be very mobile, so which means that we can use it you know, to create what we call solid-state electrolyte, replacing the current electrolyte in the battery, which causes actually combustion and flammability in the current battery. So we have been able to realize the first all solid-state you know, rechargeable battery based on this solid-state electrolyte, just by, by nanostructuring. Another one I want to give is about uh, the fact that nano, nano science or nanotechnology gives actually sometimes gives you ability to even see unexpected things. So what you see here is uh, just you know, material, uh, this same metal hydride. And if you, at the top, you see that they all have the same color. Okay. And now when you expose it to hydrogen, what you see is that there's a color change. And this color change depends on the amount of hydrogen that you have there. What happens? With this, we're able to create you know, the first you know, sensor that can actually detect hydrogen just by color change. And what you see here is there's no image processing here. This is just the color of this material as you expose it to hydrogen. And we know that this change in the optical property of the material is dependent on 
the, the thickness of this material. So we can actually manipulate this, and we can actually create different sensors that can actually give you different colors. So tell me the color you want, and I'll create a sensor that's going to make you, that, that, that will give you that color. That, that color. And now, one thing that surprised us most is also that my colleague actually told me that actually, when we breathe, so our breath contains a lot of gas, and one of them is hydrogen. And this actually can be used to actually uh, detect what we call lactose intolerance, because those who have that actually produces more hydrogen. And with this, we can actually, we have created now a simple device that just by breathing, you can actually know whether you have lactose intolerance or not. This is the beauty of you know, nanomaterial, nanotechnology, and nanoscience. And bringing that back to Africa, I just want to end with this slide. We know that the, what this show is that both graphs show that actually the economic development, GDP per growth, per the growth in GDP per capita depends on energy use. Now, we are in Africa. It means that you can see that in this graph, most of African countries are not even there because we are just below. If we need to develop, you know, then that means that we need more energy. And because we are signatory to the Paris Accord, we cannot get this energy. We must get it in a sustainable way. And therefore, we can say, well, it is, there's no need to talk about this because we have problems in the health sector. We have poverty to, to, to take care of. But I must tell you that you know, the prominence is not as good as, as not equal to in, in, importance. So we should also invest in this kind of material because there lies the ability to actually create you know, material that can you know, give us this application, especially in energy storage, that we will be able to have an Africa where we can just have solar panels and they will have battery by our side and we can power all the villages. And then we go from the dark continent to the bright continent. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Peter Ngene.